You're required to stay in the Omaha area for the first 100 days after your transplant. Your doctor will be looking for any signs of complications such as infection or graft versus host disease. It's important to note that 100 days is an approximate time frame. If you have complications, your stay could be extended for continued treatment. You must have a care partner with you during your stay in Omaha. Your care partner should be someone who's comfortable assisting you with your daily activities, managing your medication, keeping track of your calendar, and attending all your appointments with you. You will not be able to drive while on some medication, so your care partner will be responsible for transporting you. Serving as a care partner can be stressful. You may want to have other care partners on standby to step in as needed. Your care partner will be caring for you and will not be able to care for children or other dependents. Allogeneic transplant patients will have clinic visits and blood drawn at least twice a week. You may need more frequent monitoring and possibly readmission to the hospital depending on your post-transplant course. You'll be monitored closely for graft versus host disease. It's important to contact someone immediately if you have symptoms for graft versus host disease or GVHD. You'll be given contact information for your case manager and a 24-hour on-call transplant doctor. You'll learn more about GVHD in the next chapter. Around day 100, your disease status will be reevaluated, and this may include additional labs or bone marrow biopsy or scans. Once your 100 days are complete, your doctor will discuss a time frame for returning home. The first three months in terms of quality of life, it may not be normal compared to pre-transplant, but also improvements in that department happens too. Uh, so I think going in transplant with somewhat adjusted expectations of A, uh, this is winnable and this can turn around in a positive direction and B, um, although this is winnable, it doesn't happen very quickly, just like a surgical procedure. Um, it will help patients uh, not get frustrated, if you may, about uh, how come I'm not getting better soon. After I got home, I was tired. I had very little energy. I fell asleep in the middle of conversations. For the most part, I, I had up and down days, you know. I, Looking back at my journal, I can see that there were some days I didn't really feel like getting out of bed, but I forced myself to. And then I had a day or two later, a great day where I, you know, felt really well. So I had a wonderful support system, which I know made this experience so much easier. My sister from Albuquerque is a retired nurse. She came and stayed with us for the first three weeks I was at home and she kept her nurse journal on me. <laughs> we had lots of friends that supported us. Um, there was a lot of going back and forth daily for a while and then a couple every couple of days and um it was tiring but then i would go home and rest and i would remind myself and my family would remind me your job is to get well your job is just to concentrate on doing what the doctor tells you to do and just relax and sleep if you need to and put your feet up and just let your body do what it needs to do. In my 100-day evaluation, I was a little nervous since it hadn't all gone away after the stem cell transplant, you know, did, did we get it this time? So I was a little anxious when Dr. Vos came in and started going through everything and, you know, kind of wait for that, ta-da! <laughs> so we were pretty happy when we got the word that we had gotten it this time and there was no no more sign of the lymphoma. The first couple months after transplant were kind of overwhelming just because of, I th think I had an appointment about every week, seeing the doctor and getting labs and all of that good stuff. So it was kind of a bit overwhelming and I remember feeling frustrated and couldn't wait until my appointments were like every month instead of every week. And now I'm at every year instead of that. So it's. I was looking forward to that when I was able to not go in every single week. When I got out of the hospital, um, I stayed with my best friend and her family. 
Because she was working from home, my daughter worked in elementary school, so she wasn't able to be there for me. And the most difficult thing to deal with was the fatigue and the joint pain in terms of getting up and down stairs, um, walking around, like I had to take a lot of breaks, I had to take a lot of rest. I am by nature a person who's very independent and I like to take care of myself and it was difficult for me mentally to accept that I had to ask for help just to walk across the living room floor. If you could get, you know, home health to come in one or two days a week while your family is still taking care of you to kind of help walk them through what's best for the patient, that would help a lot.